this is a decision that we re revisit constantly and that we, we will revisit constantly, but tonight uh, we're expecting Trump to speak momentarily. We are going to go to those remarks uh, to see how he uses this moment, at least at first. We'll see how it goes. Again, this is a decision that um, is one that we consider to be an open-ended live decision. Um, let's go to Trump headquarters right now in Nashua, New Hampshire. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Whoa. USA, 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 USA. Well, I want to thank everybody. This is a fantastic state. This is a great, great state. You know, we won New Hampshire three times now. Three. Three. We win it every time. We win the primary. We win the generals. We've won it. And it's a very, very special place to me. It's very important. If you remember, in 2016, we came here and we needed that win. And we won by 21 points. And it was great. And uh, today, I have to tell you, it was very interesting because I said, wow, what a great victory. But then somebody ran up to the stage all dressed up nicely. <laughs> when it was at 7, but now I just walked up and it's at 14. But, but she ran up when it was 7. And, you know, we have to do what's good for our party. And she was up, and I said, wow, so she's doing So there we go. Uh, um, so this is part of the won. issue here. Uh, so Donald win. Trump she saying won. that he won New Hampshire um, not only in previous primaries, but that he won New Hampshire in the general election um, is not true. Donald Trump did, to his credit, um, in 2016 win the New Hampshire Republican primary. He did, in 2020, win the New Hampshire Republican primary. But both in 2016, when he was competing against Hillary Clinton in the general election, he narrowly lost New Hampshire in the general election. And then in 2020, when he was competing against Joe Biden in the general election, he lost New Hampshire, New Hampshire by a good, fair chunk of vote. So uh, the former president has opened his remarks tonight once again by proclaiming um, falsehoods about previous elections. This is what makes it hard to take him, uh, his pronouncements live. We'll try again, though. Here we go. You have the very, the now very unpopular governor of this state. This guy, he's got to be on something. I've never seen anybody with energy. He's like uh, hopscotch. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm watching this guy, and two weeks ago he said, we're going to win, we're going to win in the land side, we're going to win. About three days ago he started saying, well, we want to do well. That's a big difference. But I walked out just now, we're 14 points up, and I don't know what it's going to be, but when she was up here, it was like six or seven. And, you know, with like 7 percent of the vote counted. Now, uh, let, let me just tell you, uh, we, uh, we had an unbelievable week last week in Iowa. We set a record. It was the best in the history of the caucus, in the history. And uh, I remember I sort of had the same feeling. I'm up and I'm watching. And I said, she's taking a victory lap. And we, we beat her so badly, she was. But Ron beat her also. You know, Ron came in second, and he left. She came in third, and she's still hanging around. The other thing, she only got 25% of the Republican votes. I don't know if you saw that. Tremendous numbers of independents came out, because in this state, because you have a governor that doesn't, frankly, know what the hell he's doing, in this state, in the Republican primary, they accept Democrats to vote. In fact, I think they had 4,000 Democrats, Democrats before October 6. They already voted. Now, they're only voting because they want to make me look as bad as possible. Because if you remember, we won in 2016. And if you really remember, and if you want to play it straight, we also won in 2020. Yeah. By more. And we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. But as they said, we lost by a whisker, just by a whisker. No, no, no. But we can't let that happen. You know, you have to have people that speak up. I said, I can go up and I can say to everybody, oh, thank you for the victory. It's wonderful. It's what or I can go up and say, who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before? 
and, like, claimed a victory. She did very poorly, actually. She had to win. The governor said, she's going to win, she's going to win, she's going to win. Then she, she failed badly. Now, I have here, if he promises to do, to do it in a minute or less, but the only person more angry than, let's say, me, but I don't get too angry, I get even. The only person... The only per because he was there, and he did fantastically well, by the way, and then he endorsed me. And we don't have to talk about Tim Scott, who, by the way, just got engaged, we have to tell you. And that's more important than all of this stuff. But a man that got to know her very well is Vivek. I said, Vivek. I said, Vivek. Go up and say a few words about it. He has to do it in one minute or less, and then we're going to just say, we had one hell of a night tonight. And one other thing before Vivek comes. Do you see that, Paul? We're going to put it up. We have beaten Biden. You could almost say, who can't? Who the hell can't? The man can't put two sentences together. He can't find the stairs off a stage. Who can't? But. Vivek, one minute or less. Go do it, Vivek. What we saw tonight... Giving, Donald Trump is giving an, an, an unusual victory speech um, in New Hampshire um, in which uh, he initially, at the outset of his remarks, said that he had won New Hampshire both not only previous primaries but had won in previous general elections. He lost both in 2016 and in 2020 in the New Hampshire uh, general election contests. Um, he then reiterated that and then handed over his victory speech to Vivek Ramaswamy um, after saying we don't need to talk about Tim Scott and by the way he got engaged and that's more important than any of this and then we did one. So He seemed to suggest also that the governor of New Hampshire is on some sort of drug. <laughs> he said I don't know what he's on. Baseless. The yeah. governor. Uh, which, yeah. which I think is utterly baseless just to be clear. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but he, I just want to be clear, like yeah. you said this. He, so he, he said it casually, we won the primaries and we won the general. He came back to linger on it. Yeah. Acknowledging at one point, like, they said we lost by a whisper. But really, we, we won, and we won in 2016, and we won by a bigger amount in 2020. And again, like, there are misstatements, there are, uh, you know, uh, have truths, politicians tell, but, like, the fundamental core lie that is the core of the whole democratic crisis the country faces right now revolves around this just simple matter of history. You see it reflected in two-thirds of Iowa primary voters saying that Joe Biden was not legitimately elected, one half of those voters in New Hampshire. Like, so this is just in a different category, and, I would submit. Well, let, and let's just, I mean, let's just be really clear about this, right? So Trump saying tonight, after having won the New Hampshire primary, <laughs> which he has done twice before, Having then gone on to say, that's not enough. You can't just claim credit. You have to claim credit. You have to falsify the election yeah. results in the, twice, in the two times that you lost the state is a form of, like, reality bullying yes. in a way. And yes. he's done this around Iowa as well. So, for example, he doesn't have bragging rights about winning the Iowa caucuses. He lost the Iowa caucuses in 2016 to Ted Cruz. Yeah. But after winning the Iowa caucuses this time, he said, oh, I'm, it's really great to have won it for three okay. times in a row. Yeah. And he knows that it's not true, and he knows that everybody listening to him knows that it's not true. It's like his insistence on the date of the Spanish flu epidemic, or his insistence on what the hurricane track was going to be that he had to draw in with a Sharpie. It's, it's, it's an exercise in bending reality to his will and insisting that others follow. It's an exercise in making people who love him denounce reality right. and endorse his view instead as a form of fealty, as a form of loyalty. And it's a way of breaking the truth yes. in our country and showing that his most loyal people will do that in a performative and effacing way. It's called well, religious the, faith. The, the psychiatrists who wrote the book about him, literally, uh, all agreed that this is a very serious, lifelong problem. He's now in his like 70th year of never being satisfied with reality even on the days when he wins, uh, because life can never, ever give him what he wants, his insecurity being so profoundly deep and, and permanent. The victory speech, by the way, in political campaigns in the primary season is always supposed to be about 
winning more voters. Yes, <laughs> uniting the party. In the next election, whether that's the general election or the next state, you are supposed to reach out to voters who expressed a different feeling tonight. Say, reach out to the voters who voted for Haley. You don't have to specify that that's what you're doing, but every politician prior to Donald Trump has found a way to do that. He never has. And, and just, I think it's because you set it up with the last time, which is that, the, you know, throughout these however many years we are now into this, uh, n nine years, I suppose, right? 2015 is when he sort of starts. Uh, you know, there have always been these moments where there's like, he, he's able to sort of perform some version of like conventional campaigning. He stays on script and people say, oh, if only that, you know, the, it's like a joke. It's a trope, right? Like right. if only that Donald Trump. And so like last time in Iowa, it was a more conventional, it was gracious, it was thank you. So I'm glad that we saw that because that is that's the sort of the, this sort of petulant incoherence, which is really kind of the no, it's really the rhetorical register that he is at at all times. I mean, and particularly in the last three days on the trail. I mean, I don't know if people have been seeing the clips, but it is a constant degree of essentially petulant incoherence.